Events are simply when something happens in our application and we want to run a set of instructions. So what could this be? Well, for example, when the user clicks a mouse button or when the user presses a key or when the user touches their screen. These are all events that can trigger subroutines, a set of instructions or functions that run in our program. We need this because we now have graphical user interfaces, a lot like with your favorite graphics editor. You have the ability to have the layers panel and you want to add a new layer. Well, that button that you're clicking on has an event listener. It's listening out for an event particularly a mouse event where you click on that particular button and then it runs a subroutine to add the layer to your current document. This is what we're talking about with events and with graphical user interfaces with buttons and input text fields, select drop downs. We need to be able to listen out for events and then when that event occurs, we have a subroutine, a set of instructions that we want to run and we want to be able to define a subroutine to handle the action. So let's take a look at the typical type of element that you would want to add events to in HTML, which is form fields. The user interacts with form fields and your application will respond when they change the value. And what you can do with form fields is provide a name to either a set of form fields or a form field itself. And JavaScript allows us via itself to use the get elements by name. And that allows us to select elements elements or form fields via the name attribute. And in here we can provide the name cars. And you'll notice it returns an array because we have elements, which means plural. That means it will return an array. And on the zero index, we have the object that resembles the select dropdown with the name of cars. So if you take a look at a standard DOM object, you'll find that if you scroll down, you have all of these on symbol names, on abort on aux click and you have all sorts of things on blur and you have the standard on click and you also have on dbl click that stands for double click so you have all of these events and all of these event names begin with the word on so these are all the possible events that you can attach to this one dom element and i just want to choose one of these now typically you need to look at what this element would typically entail well i can use my mouse on this and i can also actually use the keyboard i can tab onto it and I can also use the down arrow and also hit return to select a value. So you can actually have mouse events and keyboard events on this particular element. So let's take a look at a real simple one such as on click. I have my on click event. Now firstly I want to show you how to do this straight in HTML. So I'm going to say on click right here in HTML on this select element. And then I'm going to set it equal. Now, whatever is in between these quotation marks will be executed as JavaScript. So I can say console.log and then I'll say you clicked me. Now, one very important thing, we are using double quotes. If you use double quotes here, you could end up escaping out of these quotation marks. And you can see this has just messed everything up. So be very, very careful. Use single quotes and double quotes and vice versa. Don't use the same quote types. So well, now that we've gone ahead and done this, let's hit refresh and let's click on this select. And you'll notice it run console.log, you click me. So you can add inline events. Why is this a bad idea and why do developers shun it? The reason why is because you want your application logic ideally in a separate file, not in the same file as your markup and presentational code. So instead of doing it this way, I'm going to go to the My App and I'm going to create a select symbol and then I'm going to say search the document and I want to search by name. So get all the elements by the name of cars and don't forget this returns an array. So we want to access the element on the zero index of the array and then what I want to do is I want to target that object. And when you do this, if I just go ahead and save this and just quickly hit refresh, I can take a look at the select DOM object. And in here you have on click. So I can just target this symbol name on click. And you can see we do have a function. And in this function, we're actually just doing the console.log. You can see it here. That's what this is doing here. So if I do this, select dot on click equals 
what's going to happen is this assignment operator is going to take whatever is in on click right here, this function that was provided by the HTML file, and it's actually going to overwrite it with this function here. So this means that I can only have one subroutine for the click event on this object. And I'll show you how you can have multiple subroutines for this object with the click event in just a second. Now, what I'd also like to show you is that all callback functions, this is what they're specifically called. We call them callback functions. And the reason why we do is because it identifies the function as a callback. It identifies it as a subroutine that's associated with an event. So that's the special name for them. And you'll notice that we have an event parameter. Now you don't have to provide this event parameter. It's actually optional. You don't have to provide it at all. But however, I do. And the reason why is because it populates, meaning it assigns to this parameter, this symbol name, an event object. And that event object gives us details and information about the event that triggered this callback function. So let's go ahead and take a look at this when we log it out to the console. So I'm going to say console.log and then I'm going to log out the event object. Let's take a look at what JavaScript actually did here. So if I take a look at this on click symbol, if I keep going down on click here, we have my function that I've assigned here. It has now deleted the function that it generated from HTML. So that's now been overwritten. We can only have one inline callback function. Second of all, we have this function and it's automatically being given an object because it's a callback function. It's associated with an event. That event data will be logged out to the console when this event triggers. So if I click, it triggers the event, it executes this execution context, and it logs out whatever event is pointing to. Some people like just saying E or EVT, which is short for event. It doesn't matter, you just need to give it a name so that you can reference the object. And in this particular object, it gives you all sorts of information. Now, depending on whether it's a mouse event or a keyboard event, or a touch event, you will get different information in this event object. But JavaScript does this for you automatically, and it's actually kind of nice. It tells us information about, for example, let's say if it's a touch or click event, it tells me where they've touched and clicked on the page relative to the element, relative to the screen, and so forth. And it tells me all this information. And also, you have the ability to have a look at the path. So you can see it's gone from the select, and then it bubbles up. This is what bubbles means. It means it, the event travels upwards, bubbles true. And this is where you get this path from. You've got the select and then it bubbles up to the body and then it bubbles up to the HTML and then it bubbles up to the document. You know, when you blow a bubble, what happens is your bubble floats upwards. Well, that's what's happening here. In essence, this event is flowing upwards. It's going from the select and bubbles up and bubbles up and bubbles up to the window object. And that's what's happening. And likewise, I can also see the source element, the element that actually triggered the event itself. And as you can see, source element is equal to that select DOM element. So without further ado, that is the inline events and all callback events pass the event object to the first parameter. And that will give you information and details about the event itself. Now here we're using inline callbacks, which I can only have one. I can either have this on click or I could have this on click in the HTML, but I only have one callback function being executed. I would actually like multiple click events. So what you can do is you can target your select dropdown and use the add event listener. This is not an inline event. You won't be able to see this function in the object itself. It's going to be defined by the JIT compiler. Now one benefit to this is again, we can have multiple events. So I can have another click event. They're probably going to me, Lawrence, this is not on click here. It's just click. Well, when we have our particular select drop down object, which I can take a look at the source element here, you take a look at the source element and you'll take a look at all of the ons. You've got on before copy, on click, on close, and so forth. Now, this is just namespace. So all these methods in effect are grouped in a namespace of on, but we don't need this anymore because we're adding the event listener. So if you want to say, for example, on click, just get rid of on, or if it's on drag, 
Again, just get rid of the on there and just type in the event name itself. So now let's go ahead and add in a callback function. And this is going to log out something different. So I'm going to say console.log and then log out. Clicked by add event listener. And also don't forget you are past the event object. Just like inline gets the event object, so does this. All callback functions, functions that will execute upon a particular user interaction or change within the document, these callback functions will always receive an event object that gives you details about that information. So I could also log out that object as well if I really wanted to. But it, again, I just want to log this out to the console. So hit refresh. And when I click, you'll notice we get the event object from the inline on click function. And then also we have this callback function, which logs clicked by add event listener. And you'll see here it says click by add event listener, and you can add in multiple callbacks and just keep going with this. So this one will be number two. Hit refresh. Now when I click the inline, then you also have this event and also this event here, which is how we do things. Now, if you want to remove an event listener, you would target the particular element in question, and then you would say remove event listener, and then type in the event name that you want to remove. So I want to remove something from the click event, and then you need to provide the symbol name that references the function, the subroutine, the callback function that you want to remove. Unfortunately, these functions are anonymous. So be very careful when you add event listeners. If you are not going to remove that callback function, that callback function doesn't need a name. But currently there's no way for us to reference this in memory. We always need symbol names, memory pointers to reference something in memory. Well, in this case, it's anonymous. I can't do it because there's no symbol name. So in this case, what I need to do is just go ahead and delete that because it's just adding more complication to this. I need to define the function with a name. So I'm going to say click callback and then I'm going to use that symbol name to reference this subroutine and I'm going to add it like so. I'm going to add it by its reference name here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that event listener. So let's first of all see if this works. So I'm going to hit refresh. I click. You'll see it says clicked by add event listener. So we have in fact attached this subroutine to the click event on this select element. And then what I want to do is target that select element, remove event listener from that element. It's under the click event. And then we need to provide the symbol name. The symbol name is the memory pointer to those sets of instructions, which is going to be click callback. So we're adding it and then we're removing it. Let's see if that works. And yes, it did. It added it and then it removed it. And by the time I've clicked it, it's already been removed. That's how you add and remove and use the add event listener method. So to add inline events, you must target the element itself and then you have to choose the symbol name that is associated with the event that you'd like on click on drag you can take a look at those events and see which events match up to the element that you're using and then you can add in a callback function all callback functions receive the event object automatically this symbol name is automatically referencing an event object that's created by the JIT compiler and then also you can add event listeners via the JIT compiler. It's managed in the JIT compiler and remove event listeners. And that means that you can add multiple callback functions to a single event. And you can also have inline events right here in the DOM.